Hey guys, Kevin Cage back with another cryptocurrency update. Welcome to the channel. Like and subscribe if you're serious about investing in the digital asset space. And let's get right into it today. One taken uncut. If you have not seen the previous video from yesterday, please go see that right now. Again, this will kind of be used to reference all of that. I have a bunch of information today. I'm playing, you know, catch up as much as possible. Been reading so much, trying to catch up between this work, so many things that I'm juggling. But again, I want to get all this information out because I think that we are really on the verge of something very, very big. Now, none of this is financial advice. Please do your own research. Take everything I say with a grain of salt. And again, make your own decisions at the end of the day. I get it. Many people are frustrated by all the connections we see, but the price does not budge. You've heard my theories. You know my point of view. My belief is keep the price as low as possible for as long as possible until they are ready for you know complete adoption. Because at this point, we would already see a slow and steady price you know, based off of the, you know, on-demand liquidity volumes, I'm not worried about on-demand liquidity. I've already referenced that for months now. I'm not worried about this minuscule volume. Um, it's good to keep track of everything. And yes, it's important to see these corridors growing, but you know my belief. Again, domestic and then international, you understand we see, you know, the messaging and reconciliation and clearing get improved. And then we can work on, obviously, true settlement, which is the delivery of the payments. Okay, there's so many things and steps. You understand that Ripple is essentially integrated or at least partners with everyone in the world, whether it's directly or indirectly. Of course, we can say the 350 plus partners. Then we can say thousands. Okay, for example, you know, one, you know, small thing that comes to mind, and this is the tip of the iceberg, is Ripple with D Local, D Local, their partner. They're integrated already into Alipay, the world's largest mobile network. That's one example. We already have connections to Facebook. We have Pay, uh, PayPal, I almost said Pay Plus which is another payment platform that Ripple's integrated with, which is Finastra's, and they can be utilized on CLS. Um, you know, I'm not sure about the DTCC and, you know, Project Ion, but regardless, that money still has to go over, you know, throughout Forex. But DLocal, we talked about Alipay. We can talk about, you know, every single group. We can basically say PayPal and Apple Pay, all of them do have Interledger protocol type of plugins. Eventually, you're going to realize, wow, was this the grand plan? And we've seen in those infographics years ago, and you're understanding the banks may have agreed at some level to adopt this technology. Time will tell, but I do like our odds. So let's get into some information, and please continue doing your own research, guys. I am just a messenger here. So Jack the Rippler sharing this. So again, we have... David, center manager here, explains the new MoneyGram keyboard integration and how to send money using WhatsApp. Now, we understand Facebook purchased WhatsApp. We understand that WhatsApp now has this um, MoneyGram integration. And yes, Ripple owns, you know, a good 10% of MoneyGram, at least that. And we understand the $50 million strategic investment. Some people are very upset with recent news. We understand that with MoneyGram and other groups, whether it's Brazil and India, we can do direct deposits via India. Um, we've even gone through in the past, of course, let me just go really quick right here. Ashish Perla back in like 2018, yep, of July, he even said this, you know, and I think that in our pipeline now, we have probably 50% of the market in India. Now, attention guys, that is not XRP, but that is right here, either integrated onto Ripple, the company utilizing Ripple Net, or in the deal or in the pipeline. So in the sort of pipeline to be signed to India, that's already 50% in 2018. I'd imagine we're at 80%, if not 100% now, based off of recent developments. Now, that does not mean they're using XRP today, but what I'm saying is, if you understand how easy that flip of the switch word is and how easy they say every, every RippleNet partner can leverage on-demand liquidity, you understand how quick this can really happen. Now, yes, I understand I've listened to these groups in a Flash FX and very conservative people talk about how it takes time to build depth of you know order books and build that liquidity over time. I get that. I am sensitive to that. I'm just showing you that these connections are massive and they should not be ignored. So what he said again, and guess what? We're going to take that back to Wells Fargo and then we're going to say there's not a better way to send into India than Ripple. Now, you also have to understand the corridors that they're targeting. Remember, we kind of covered that. These are high, you know, there's high friction, inefficient corridors that they're targeting. They're not trying to solve every single payment going into India. You just have to understand that. I think people are you know, kind of missing the point here. This is not that far-fetched to dominate India. Notice that is one of the BRICS nations. We're going to talk about that. So really quick, again, Jack the Rippler is showing this before I get sidetracked again. So MoneyGram's announcement about XRP's integration, it's clear how it will work. And again, XRP is not being used today that we know of here, at least. And we know that MoneyGram was utilizing XRP in their other payment flows. And now it seems like they're getting that push to use it more so, you know, P2P. 
let's just watch this really quick okay so we'll see this integration i'm not a big fan of this but i just want to show you this 40 second demo um again payments are the future I have to exit the application and find the MoneyGram app, I can easily just go to the WhatsApp, have my conversation, click on this, whatever code you end up inputting, again, this is a customized code that the customer is going to create. They'll have the ability to uh, press play, uh, I mean, uh, a pay, receive, uh, any information they have on the individual or even their history. If I select pay, it's going to pull it out of my contact list for my WhatsApp. My, uh, WhatsApp. And now let's say this particular individual was Reyes, right? This case, I'm sending money over to Reyes. Let's say I want to do $2,500. It's going to give you the exchange rate. All right, understand there's always conversion, whether it's the rupee, the rupiah, the ruble, the euro, the Philippine peso, the Thai baht. It goes on, okay? So, you know, I'm not a huge fan of that, but we're going to see a bunch of integrations with many apps. And yes, I know, you know, Facebook Pay and all these groups, but it is interesting that, you know, Facebook would decide to allow their, you know, WhatsApp utilize Ripple. Now, obviously, they want different merchants to have different options. So it could be that. I don't want to get too bullish, but I'm just showing you the capability is there. So as we keep going down here, we can see this. So again, Lord XRP is sharing this. Today, we are starting payments for people using WhatsApp in Brazil. So the reason why people are so excited and speculating is because of the recent news with Ripple. We know that Ripple, you know, just weeks ago was set in their meeting, again, virtually, of course, with the president of the Central Bank of Brazil. Could they be discussing last mile settlements. We already knew that they were planning to launch on-demand liquidity with the Brazilian Real since last year, kind of building that infrastructure. Yeah, I mean, I'd assume that Brad Garlinghouse and these groups meet regularly to kind of discuss roadmaps, especially, especially, what am I saying? Especially because, you know, there's a lot of need for remittance and actual improvements. So it's not crazy to think, yeah, but Again, guys, we're waiting for real volume. I just wanted to share that. So Ripple's XRP payments product set for imminent launch in Brazil, June 12, 2020, daily hodl. And again, Mark Zuckerberg just talking about this. So launching payments for people using WhatsApp in Brazil, sending and receiving money as easy as sharing photos. Interesting. Sounds a lot like Ripple's vernacular, guys. Again, remember, we can stream video from a space station, but to send money to another country, it actually is faster just to put it in a suitcase and fly there. We're also enabling small businesses to make sales right within WhatsApp. So understand Facebook Libra could be just that you know permission database, really just a fancy IOU system. It does not compete with the likes of XRP. Please understand that. All right, so to do this, we're building on Facebook Pay, which provides a secure and consistent way to make payments across our apps. I want to thank all of our partners for making this possible, working with local banks. So you can see these local banks here, leading payment processor for merchants in Brazil. All right, now remember, there's many networks, there's many merchants, it's very clunky. So this is where kind of ILP comes into play. If you saw my video a few, uh, maybe a few days ago, you'd kind of get that reference as well. There's not going to be one ledger, there's not going to be you know, a single network, but what's helpful is there's going to be a protocol to bridge these networks, just like the internet. Okay. There's not one single ISP. They're all connected. All right. So next up, let's keep going. All right. Then even here again, Ian Northing showing Visa is working with Facebook so that consumers can fully use the new payments feature on WhatsApp in Brazil. So notice all of these companies seem to be working in tandem to help Brazil. Is this for the velocity of money? And again, kind of global liquidity. I'm not really sure, but it is interesting nonetheless. So we know Visa acquired Earthport Ripple Nets partner, another behemoth guys for the globe, kind of that hub and spoke model, similar to DLT. Remember the XRP ledger, it's a distributed consensus based type of protocol network and this is the future dlt has resiliency everyone's going to get a copy and i'm just repeating this for any newcomers that kind of are like well what is cryptocurrency what is xrp what are digital assets do they have a future and they absolutely do and you know obviously we can don't even get me started on the energy consumption of xrp utilizing proof of consensus proof of correctness as its mechanism um, we can go on and on forever, but just understand that, you know, the G20, the World Economic Forum, you know, um, the FSB, all of these groups talking about many of the concerns and even SWIFT talking about efficiency, um, you know, uh, transparency, all of these things. It is something to keep an eye on because obviously XRP and Ripple has been working with regulators since day one. All right. All right. So we'll keep going. Understand just massive amounts of users on WhatsApp, let alone that. 
Now, Matthew L-I-N-Y. So, guys, we're not going to talk about XRP. I'm just saying we have to understand the connections of the partners and Ripple themselves. So, again, on-demand liquidity is set for Brazil. And it's interesting because now we do have that WhatsApp integration. We know that MoneyGram and uh, Ripple's planning to really kind of do that hard press on the market while they have that momentum. And we've heard Ripple say, yes, we have the funding, we're ready to go. Swift doesn't have the funds. And, yes, they can be complementary. It doesn't mean that Swift has to die or Ripple has to die. But I just think that there will be, you know, a few key players to really dominate this market. So we know MasterCard, of course, partnering with Facebook as well, just like Visa partnering with Facebook. Funny enough, MasterCard has plenty and plenty of connections to even groups within R3, utilizing Corda in the future, or just kind of enhancing even just the messaging side for trade finance. Now, notice this again, same thing, enabling Brazilians to send and receive money using WhatsApp. Okay. Interesting. So I understand, guys, you guys might say, oh, this has nothing to do with XRP. It never will. We never know. And I understand that there's going to have to be different options available. And with all these rumors, even with Western Union potentially buying MoneyGram, time will simply tell. OK, but I like what I see. So this is all institutional matters. Nothing big, you know, again, typical. OK, and yes, this is planned for on-demand liquidity for Brazil. So I'd only assume that maybe Brazil finally is ready to go and they'll be one of the first countries. And it's interesting enough to watch BRICS, Brazil, Russia, India, China, South Africa. All right, let's keep going. Again, payments.com, WhatsApp users will be using Visa Direct, cloud tokenization. OK, all right in front of us, guys. This whole type of pandemic kind of lined everything up as well. OK. Again, even we got Lionel here. I don't know why he changed his name on Twitter. But uh, anyways, Facebook ban, WhatsApp supported by Ripple Partners and even American Express, which has been a long term partner. Understand, remember the 50 50 joint venture of Amex and Lian Lian in China. Yes, Ripple's met with the Central Bank of China, even dating back to 2017. You can go right on their Twitter. You can look up articles. You can do your own research. I promise this is just fact. OK. All right. Let's keep going here unless I'm miss missing something. All right. Right here, Anders Lundberg, what I was referencing. So check for on-demand liquidity in the works for XRP usage by Brazil. Next, we have Russia, India, China, and South Africa. South Africa Rand or African Rand. Now remember, there's been talks even, you know, XRP Stort kind of talking about, you know, Binance does have the Russian ruble, their currency. We'll see. I guess it has been seen on utility scan. I'll believe it when I see it, but it is interesting nonetheless. Now, we understand BRICS is going to be huge, the impact and the implications of it on the U.S. dollar. You've heard my thoughts. You've heard my rants. I'm going to keep going, okay? Um, and remember, you know, India, it's already in the pipeline. I don't think it'll be as hard as you think. And we've heard that all those regulations are kind of BS anyways. Now, something interesting, even this, the CEO of eToro recently saying this, we've been hearing, you know, all these Riddlers and, you know, self-proclaimed insiders saying that there's going to be a market crash. We'll see. I mean, you know, we've had these weird uptrends. The last serious crash we've had, at least in terms of the stock market, was what? All the way back in March? Look at this. So this is what he says. CEO of eToro. I believe it was eToro, correct? Yeah. Okay. So listen to this. There is a crash coming soon in the equities market in the next three weeks. Someone, not sure whom, is going to sell short their position and crash the markets. Buyers beware. And this was just posted last week. So we'll see if he's right. Um, and again, just kind of a, a correction it can only go up for so long. Now, this is where, you know, it gets a little funny, this guy. So XRP Dami sharing this. So remember, guys, I'm just talking about I'm talking about the information people are following more, you know, Mr. Pool riddle stuff, because, yes, some of these Riddlers have predicted even from 2018, they said before XRP moons, there will be a national emergency. And those aren't really common. What did we have this year in 2020? A national emergency. They predicted quarantine. Yeah. Now, I had no idea about a pandemic coming um, and anything else, but it really is interesting to kind of see all the things that they've pointed towards. Is it lucky guessing? Is it are they just informed? Are they high up and know something? Are they trying to help? I don't know. You guys can speculate. We'll see. But I'm holding XRP long term regardless. So I think we're going to be in good hands. And yes, I'm trading short bags. I own, you know, a portfolio of a bunch of altcoins. I see tremendous upside in the future. So hopefully if, you know, you're holding 10 altcoins and, you know, eight of them go down the toilet. Well, hopefully the two up, the upside is so, you know, obviously high. It doesn't matter. So right here, I'm going to read this because this is interesting. So this guy, he went on Twitter by Bala Poloco. He went by um, different aliases and pseudonym, uh, aliases and pseudonyms such as Marvin Gaye and Ross Vandermeer. And literally this guy says, here, I took a picture of it. So let's see. So definitely won't forget. I'll zoom in for you guys if you want to screenshot this. 
All right, so definitely won't forget. If you don't mind me asking, what are your thoughts on the recent developments in the world of digital assets with Libra? And keep in mind, this is back in 2019 of July. So asking digital assets, Libra, Trump, Mnuchin's thoughts on crypto. Remember, Mnuchin hired his buddy, Brian Brooks now, former Coinbase legal chief officer, controlling the US banking system. Like it really is lining up and it's kind of eerie. But anyways, recent Ripple MoneyGram, you know, cooperation they're doing. Is this all part of the plan to gear up for 2020? And this guy has been saying XRP is going to moon by end of 2020 for a long time. Um, and we'll see. I mean, if it doesn't happen, I don't care. I'm keeping my expectations low regarding that. But I just see utility and adoption on the way. They said, Ripple said 2019, the year of integrations connectivity. And then they called 2020 the year of the digital asset. And they still have been talking about the storm. Mr. Poole posted the storm picture, a really peculiar one. Two weeks later, of course, Brad Garlinghouse on his PowerPoint slide had the same picture. Is it Ripple trolling us? Do they have different insiders? I don't know what to think. You guys decide for yourselves. I just wanted to share this. So again, this guy, this Marvin Gaye, Ross, Balapoloco, all these crazy names he has, says, yes, what if, what if some geopolitical event triggers the collapse of the new system in late July? Well, I'm not expecting anything. What if they introduce the new financial system afterwards, mid-late August? Well, I'm not expecting anything. Just what if, plans within plans, 2020. We'll see you guys. Just thought that was interesting and kind of fun to entertain, all right? All right, let's keep going. So again, we know India in the pipeline, Ashish Birla speaking about this, and this is this is old news, and we've had so many more developments as well. I mean, even just, I really like this quote, check this. So we really made a smart decision to say, let's get real, let's build a real business, and that was a hard decision because listen, Facebook went public in like three or four years, but working with banks, sorry, it's a pain in the ass, but it's paying off now for us at Ripple. And that took two to three years for us to build the products, get them out to banks. All right, so now in 2018, we're now selling our products to banks and we're ever closer or closing over a deal per week. All right, and the same thing, guys, we've seen the recent stats of how many they're at now, which is just incredible for a company like, like ours. And yes, I mean, they're moving relatively slow, but at least they are within U U.S. jurisdiction. So I think they're well protected as well, considering they even met with the Federal Reserve within one month of starting. I mean, obviously, thanks to people like Greg Kidd and their connections. But just understand, even Craig Phillips, I mean, come on, Mnuchin's buddy on the board for Ripple and all these other advisors. It's just, in my mind, it's a done deal. And that might be a very dangerous way for me to think. Um, but again, that's just my thought. And I'm being honest with you guys. So where the entire inertia was disrupt banks and we're going in and we're working with them. Burla says blockchain and crypto is still in its infancy. Ripple's working to shape the future of emerging tech, blah, 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 blah. All right, let's keep going. So right here, we're going to finish up with this. So again, I am Legion sharing a digital asset investor video that he recently did really well done. And what I liked about this was they're kind of going through, um, I'm going to say OMFIF, it's O-M-F-I-F. We talked about this group a good amount, and we're just going to check out the advisors really quick and kind of just talk about the people. Because yes, you're investing in, you know, protocol, you're providing this type of liquidity to the network or just buying and reducing the supply. I get it. Um, but let's just kind of see who we're investing in as well. We've done so many connections, guys. So just understand this is a little piece of the pie. So we can see the council, the advisors network. We'll keep going. And we got this gentleman, Frank of DZ Bank. Now let's keep going here. We see DZ Bank's PowerPoint. We see Ripple with Interledger Protocol. Again, we have the XRP ledger is the ledger system, the accounting system. We have IOP, which is bridging the networks. And yes, XRP is the digital asset that is native to it. Now they can program smart contracts and utilize Codeus, things of that nature. Just makes you wonder, okay? Bilateral agreements with finality, true settlement, guys. T plus zero is ideal. Um, now we have tips, again, plugged right into, look, Existing liquidity in Target 2. So we have the security system. We showed them connected to the Euro system with tips. And guess who they chose? Task Group. Okay, they have that gateway. Who are they integrated with directly? Showing the pros and cons. And you can Google it. Ripple in utilizing XRP. So it really makes you wonder, okay, how much money is going through these systems. We've seen that we're seeing $50 million move over the Euro system every 3 to 30 seconds. A $50 million transaction. I'm not looking at silly on-demand liquidity volume with, you know, MoneyGram and remittance. Well, I'm looking at the big boy money, but everything's a stepping stone. All right. And now here, DZ Bank again, second largest bank in Germany. You can see, you know, how many branches, offices, largest uh, private sector financial service organizations, central institution, and is a corporate investment bank. All right. You can read a little bit more about it, but just understand, you know, they're a behemoth and also a member of EBA, the Euro Banking Association. Okay, many subsidiaries, 
And this is just one little example. Now, again, to look at the OMFIF, we can see this, an independent think tank for central banking. And yes, I've done a lot of videos on this as well. I know many people have. I probably covered this two months ago as well. But again, with teams in London, Singapore, and the US, just like Ripple, they have offices in London, Singapore, and the US, focuses on global policy and investment themes related to central banks, sovereign funds, pension funds, regulators, and treasuries. Now, check this out. Look how much money's here. Global public investors with investable assets of 37 percent eight trillion dollars are at the heart of this network interesting all right guys i will call it a day i'll get going on another video i'm sure this was all over the place hopefully you enjoyed it or hopefully you took you know something away we're going to watch these developments of specifically brazil the partners they're using we're going to watch visa mastercard you know facebook pay whatsapp all of these groups and we're going to see what happens in the future so with that guys i appreciate it and i will see you in the next video